may have missed the session. So we'll get started. Close that. I've already got profit track and point of sale open on this. So if we go into setup, register settings, keyboard layout, I got my grocery standard keyboard, which I'll open up here. Now this keyboard, if anyone follows the YouTube channel is the one that I did a video on for the, how to change to the new default keyboard. So this template is currently up on our website for anyone that wants it, but I'll be covering how to edit it specifically. So this here is our standard or very similar to our standard. So the new standard of keyboard, and there's two, there's one for grocery, one for fuel. This is the grocery is you've got the top left, the receipt, you've got all your primary functions here, your numpad here, and a quick reference menu in the bottom left, which is your home bakery bulk items. You can rename these as needed. That's fine. So I'm going to go through a couple of advanced features and functions, and then I'm going to go through how to create your own template. So first things first, if you are creating your own keyboard and you're not going to use exactly this one, you need to modify this one and copy it. So we'll do that now and we'll give a rough example. Now what you can do is you can click shift on your keyboard and click and drag and you can see all of these buttons just selected. Now what I can do is if I click on one of them, it's going to bring it up and that's fine. And I'll change its color just a little bit for the sake of it. And then it'll immediately bring up the next one because I've selected multiple, it's going to keep showing me all of them. And that's just to help with data entry. So I'll go through and I'll click OK on all of these. But that the idea behind that is if you're going into a very prominent menu for products, and this would be your fruit and veg sort of thing where you have a massive amount of keys to edit, you can just select and drag. And that way you don't have to keep going into each individual button, it'll just bring it up for you. Alternatively, you can also do set functions. So if I go shift, click, right click, I can set the font on all of my keys in one go. I can change the color of all of them in one go and I can change the jump to. So at the moment that telecom recharge card, because it's got that little icon, it's going to jump somewhere. I can tell it to stay put, go back one, whatever on mass for all of them. Now the idea behind that is if you are creating one, well, let's just go soft drink, for example, and you go, you know what? I don't like the font of any of these products. You can just shift click, right click, set font, We'll just change it to bold just to make it easy, but you can see there it removed it. Now that was because it was already in bold, I might add, but that's the idea. It will shift click multiple products and then you can do a command or a right click to choose a function to make it easier. Now on the home screen, so now that we've covered that, and that's one of the primary things we're gonna be using. We're gonna talk about how to change this to how we want it. So one of the ones I've done lately is that this was really, really good. And that was great, but we could change it a little bit here and there. Now, that is entirely up to yourself. And the way I explain this whenever I'm on site is it really comes down to this bottom left. You can change anything at the top that you want. If you don't like the order that some of these things are in, that's totally up to you. You can change them to fit your business, but it's the bottom left one that I'm going to say is going to change it just about every store because this is all, it's all store information. It's about what you guys use on the pause more than anything else. So in this case, we've got soft drinks there. Now, if soft drinks aren't a big part of what you do, that's kind of a redundant button. So you can go through and rename it. So what I'll do, I will edit it. I'm just going to call it, you know, I'll call it candy for now. Why not? Let's see. We, let's say we sell a lot of lollies and candy rather than just soft drink. Now I could go through and change a lot of these if I don't want open sales being there. I could change that to, you know, smoothies, for example. Once you've changed everything in there and you're happy with it, click on copy. All right. So that's the name of the original one, standard sales menu. And now you can go candy. All right. So this is the candy keyboard, which looks identical to the standard sales menu in every way because we've copied it. So what you do, right click candy, edit, change the functionality, link to other keyboard, and we're gonna link it to the candy. And now you can't really see a difference, right? It's exactly the same. So that's what I was talking about when we created a standard. We created a standard of keyboard where everything across the top remains the same because 
In this example, I'm okay with that. I don't need to change any of my functions. Of course, like I said, site dependent, you may need to, but the bottom left needs to be updated everywhere. And so does the products. So that's what we've done. We've copied the keyboard. So the quick reference menu stays the same on every key or every keyboard, I should say. Now it's just a matter of shift clicking, selecting everything, selecting your product where it brings up all of them and then just start putting them in. So that'd be, you know, Cadbury chocolate and M&Ms, that sort of thing, because we're in the candy menu, rinse and repeat. And that's the process you just keep going through every time. So I'd go back to home, copy again, and I'd create one for smoothies. And then I'd link the smoothies button on the standard sales menu to the smoothies keyboard we created, rinse and repeat. So at the moment, this is linked to, I think this was the open keys. Yeah, open sales, that's what it was, that's fine. So if we go home, copy, I'm just gonna go through it one more time so we can get it all down pat. Smoothies, and of course you can name it whatever you like, it's just for simplicity for my sake. And then we right click on smoothies, edit, functionality, link to other keyboard, smoothies. Now when we jump there, you can see it's smoothies up here, and that's fine. Again, you'd shift click all your products, change it to your smoothie options, and go from there. Now, one of the big things I do wanna talk about as well is creating a intermediary keyboard. And people don't quite understand what that is. So the easiest way that you can do this with Profit Track, give an example, you always want your checkout staff to go, hey, do you want X item for $3? You're trying to upsell something. Not the only example, there's plenty of others, you know, do you have your loyalty cards, such and such, but you want it to happen every single time, right? And you don't wanna to have to press a button for a prompt or anything like that. You just want it to be there every single time. Here's what you do. So I'm gonna say specifically in this case, we're upselling, but it doesn't have to be that. I'm gonna copy this keyboard and I'm gonna call it upsell. Now what I'm gonna do is shift click everything and when I say everything, in this case, I actually mean everything and delete it. Right now, completely blank keyboard, right? Now what I can do is go click drag, make it massive. And do this. And then I can change the font, make it bold, make it big. Let's say 24 for the example, right? And then what you wanna do is go functionality, link to other keyboard and it's standard subtotal menu. And what we need to do is just add a question mark to that because the OCD in me is gonna annoy me if I don't. And then all you do is you create two buttons Um, and we'll say green because, you know, green is good. Same thing again, make it bold, make it big. Boom. And this is the tricky bit. Right. If I paste that. Oh, it's one square too big. Oh, no. That's fine. What we'll do, delete that, we don't want that there. Change this. We'll go red and red and no. And no. All right, so now we've got a prompt. And this is an example, obviously, but no matter what they click here, it's gonna to go to the subtotal, right? Which is what we want. So. What we can do now is on the home screen, change the subtotal button to link to upsell. And you would need to do that on every screen. So, and that's why I always say do your keyboard default first, because otherwise you have to go back through every single screen and link and change the link to subtotal. So always make sure you've got everything laid out first and then do the fine stuff after. But anyway, click on subtotal and here we go. Why have you come back my friend, delete. Maybe it's hiding somewhere and I need to delete that properly. Anyway, did you ask they wanted a garlic bread for $3.99? So obviously that's a pretty generic example, but that's the idea behind it. It's to remind the checkout operator that, hey, we're doing X right now and we need to either upsell certain item or 
maybe ask for a loyalty card, ask for something that's going on, but they're always going to hit this screen. And then no matter what button they press, yes, no, or otherwise, it's going to link to the subtotal. Now you can get smarter with that too. You don't have to leave it like that. You can click on that, click no, and if they click no, it just takes you straight back to the home screen instead of the subtotal. That way, if they haven't asked for it, it's never gonna let them transact it. So just food for thought on that, that's how you can do it. And of course, if you wanna remove it at any point, you just edit functionality and change it from upsell back to your subtotal menu. And that menu is now gone. So the idea behind that is just, it's an intermission screen. It's not one that has to be there constantly. It's one that's just there to help remind the operators as they move along. And that's it. Now, while doing this, I'm going to point out one of the most common things people always forget, and I see it all the time, is if you're using one of our defaults, like the fruit and veg, which is totally fine, you can do that, is the jump to. So I've already fixed it on a lot of them. Yeah, this is a good example, apples, right? So it's going to link to that, and it's going to change all of this. We need to change it all back, right? Now, that happens a lot. And that's where I said the shift click right click. If I do that, change your jump to to stay put, it's now not going to jump to the wrong keyboards on its return. And it's quite that simple. Just right click, set to, oh, sorry, jump to, stay put. I keep thinking set, that's my bad. And that's it, right? That's pretty straightforward for moving things around. Now, we can go a step further on top of all of that if we really like, if we don't like the buttons. So I'll copy this. And if I go, Sales menu new. Now it looks the same, obviously, but for if I, for whatever reason, don't like the color of the buttons or the look of these buttons, if I don't even like the format, if I don't like how it's laid out, I can change all of this. It's completely open to my interpretation. So I'll give you the way I like to do this. And of course, adapt it to yourselves because that's totally fine. I will always, if I'm completely creating one from scratch, shift click, delete, shift click, delete, I will always leave one key from an area. And that's because I might like the general key. So in this case, I don't mind the button for the products, you know, the telecom recharge cards in this case. That's fine. Looks totally fine to me. Obviously that green's a little weird and I can fix that, but I like the actual button. So I might keep that one for when I need to repopulate the products. But the rest of it, I could change. Absolutely. So let's say I don't need all of these quick reference guides, right? I go, all right, well, look, I need the function, but I don't need these three, delete them. Don't have a bakery, delete them. Move those up. Move function there. I've just made that skinnier as a quick reference. Gives me more room for me to put my products in on the home screen. Same thing goes for everything though with this, right? I could completely move all of my functions I just lost the product and I know why I had it selected. That's my bad. Anyway, I could select all of my buttons and move them around to how I like them to make it fit and make things work, right? It doesn't all have to be in one location, not at all. So if I go this way, and I'm just having a bit of a play with the format at the moment. I feel I offer everyone this, just feel free to have a play yourselves because it comes down to individual preference. I can't tell you what you may or may not want here. That's not my place. But let's say we do it like this, that receipt that I just removed, by the way, which was unintentional, is just called receipt viewer in here. Okay. So this is all completely up to interpretation. It's how you want to do it. And what's great about this system is we've tried to make it easy for individual, for independents to have their way with the keys. So you can see here, I've completely just shifted it all around, right? This is the way I prefer to see it. Keypad on the right, functions on the left, receipt at the bottom, all my products at the top. That's fine. You can do that however you like. And like I said, if you don't like the actual buttons, right? If we go in here, so that button is an IS gray. You can see that it matches the profit track in the back there. Perhaps you don't like that color and that's totally fine. You can define your own colors and you can make them as custom as you like. 
So let's say it's blue, but that blue is a bit vibrant for me. We'll go okay, second one, do it again. And that's where you should, and I did this wrong, keep an eye on your uh, RGB, your red, green, blue colors, but that's fine. Perhaps I want that sort of color for my buttons instead. Perhaps I like the font and I like the color of the font, but it's just the color of the buttons I don't like. Maybe I'll change that. That's fine. No matter how you want to do it, that's how you do it. Once you've created your template, you save it, All right? So right now we've created a template. This is a template here. So we would copy this, save it, do what we need to. So this would be our sales menu in general. This is the one we'd have to link to instead of the STD sales menu that comes with the keyboard and go from there. So at this point, you'd add products. And on the home screen, generally, I'd recommend that these would be the products you would use a lot that aren't scannable. So that would be things from a deli, perhaps. Maybe it was a uh, hot food option, something like that would usually go on the home screen just for quick access so that people don't have to be playing around trying to find things through the menus. Now, once you're happy with the home screen, like I said, you would copy and you'd start renaming them all. So we cut down the quick reference menu here to just ice cream, fruit, veg, chemicals, and then the function menu. Now the function menu is irrelevant in this case because it's just the functions on the pause, which is fine. So if I go back to, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Sales menu new, thank you. All of these have to link back to this, right? Everything has to link back to home because, or rather specifically sales menu new. So if I go into ice cream, still the old template. And in this case, it's not even ice cream, it's fruit and veg, but we're gonna gloss over that. So if I bring back up the sales menu new, we'd go copy ice cream new. And I'm gonna link that and it should be, yep which looks identical again. Now, problem is that home button on the ice cream menu is currently linked to the sales menu. So we'd go, all right, well, we don't want that one. We want the sales menu new. And every time we do that, we have to make sure we can jump between them and it goes to the right place. And you can see there, it just didn't. So we need to figure out why. So we know jumping to ice cream right now. Ah, wrong one, ice cream new. Yep, that's the new one, go back home and we're in the new one. There we go. So we've now just successfully linked two new keyboards. So again, we populate this with whatever ones we want on the home screen. So I'm gonna just say chicken for now. Yep. Go into ice cream and you'd go, you know, chalk chip. And rinse, repeat, right? So you go through and you start creating your new, your new keys. And that way you've got a completely new keyboard layout and you've got it the way you want. So I have got a video up and I recommend people check it out if they're not too sure about changing between keyboards. And I might actually show that now, I'll do that in a sec. But essentially it's only there as a guide. You don't have to use it as it sits. You can change it to however you feel suits. And if you get stuck, you can always give us a buzz. Professional services are always willing to help out with keyboard editing, it's fine. But I will actually show that really quickly. So if I save this, and anyone on a current profit tracker version, uh, current version of profit track, unlike myself, I'm on a bit of a data version now, but that's all right. We'll be able to edit things themselves. It's not as password protected. So if I go into setup, register settings, register setup, you can see in here my keyboard's grocery standard. Now, if I have more than one, and I don't know if I do in this system at the moment, I can import it. I'll have a couple here. And then once I'm happy with it and completely edited, and that could take over a couple of days, just a few minutes a day in your spare time. What you do is you go into your register setup, change this to the name of your other one, which if you use the one on our website is just IS default grocery, I think it's called. Then you'd hit save and send to the registers. And what you can also do is go into the pause itself and change a keyboard, All right? And that's one of the other things we'll touch on really quickly as well. So if I go into here, keyboard layout. So that's how you change keyboards, because right now you'll have yours. I would recommend instead of changing the one that's currently being used live, 
grab one of the default ones, have a play around with that because that won't affect your point of sales until you change it in that register settings and send it down. That way it's just, you can play with it over a period of time. The more effort you want to put into it, the more you can. So we're here now, that's fine. I do want to point out to, there is another thing we can do. So again, we'll go to our sales menu new and I have removed the receive viewer, that's fine. One of the things I'm going to point out is that you can create master keyboards. So right now, this isn't a master. If I click edit, click master, click OK, save that. It does take a second. There we go. Send this down to the point of sale. There we go. That should have sent to this one as well. It's receiving. Cool. If I sign in here, we're still getting the old keyboard, right? We're still getting that original one that we don't want anymore. We've created a layout that suits us more than what the default one was. So ignore that. That's just flexi fuel on my computer loading up. I forgot to remove it. If I go back into my registers though, I'll have one. There we are. And you can see the main keyboard on this is STD sales menu. And now that we've marked the sales menu new as a master, I can select that, click OK, save, send, OK. It's going to send down to the point of sale. Yep, I know number nine, yeah, that's not reachable, that's fine. I'm going to just close FlexiFuel as well. I did end that service before starting the video, but cool. So jump in and it's now trying to link to the new one. Now, what I've realized here is that that telecom recharge cards come across with us, right? And this is why we need to have the play because it can do some funky things like that. But essentially, it's just out of reach. It's just underneath the keys. Now, if you get stuck on that sort of thing, you'll probably need PS to use SQL to find it and delete it. But that's the premise of it. Now, the reason I wanted to show master keyboards is for another reason. So with a master keyboard, it's what the pause is gonna sign in with. So you can have a pause in one area that says, or rather is for your grocery, it's for your general storefront, and you could have one in you know, either it'd be an in-store business such as like a uh, smoothie shop or hardware or something like that. And they could go to a completely different keyboard menu and that could be fine. So you could create a completely new one. Again, you just copy, you'd go instead of sales menu, let's say it's a smoothie bar specifically, or let's say a juice box. We've already got smoothies, don't we? Create a new master. You go through and change this keyboard to be how you want. Uh, for the sake of what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna bada boom. I know that doesn't look too neat, but it's just for the point of the example. Close that. If I now go to my registers again, go to my pause, I've now got juice as a menu. Now, because I copied it, that button that was out of reach, I'm just not going to do the SQL while I'm recording. Because that button's out of reach, this is still going to look a little bit funky because we copied that key, but I'll restart. Actually, I'll just lock this. I think that should do the job. You can see here, we've now got a juice button. We're on the juice keyboard. So obviously I delete chicken. I need to get that fixed, which I'll do once I'm off the stream. But essentially what's happened there is that when I had the, when we first got rid of the original keyboard, I moved a menu over the button and the only place the button could go was underneath. So that's where it went. So that needs to be removed. I'll fix that post. So that's essentially keyboard editing in an advanced format, creating your own keyboards, editing on mass, that sort of thing. So at this point, I'll unmute the lobby.